Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a drum pad. We have a couple of different drum kits. We have our brand new DKK Ocho, which is drum kit. It's our first drum kit with eight uh, drum pads possible to connect to it, and it's also our first surface mount, nearly completely built drum kit. Um, we're keeping our through-hole drum kit kit, uh, the DKK AI. Um, it can hold up to six drum pads, and then there's the original drum kit kit, which is a mini shield for the Arduino. It, uh, you have to use it with an Arduino, and you connect it like that, and you connect your drum pads along here. So, let's get into building of the actual drum pads. To build the drum pads, you're going to need a couple of supplies that don't come with the kit. So, the kits come with all the electronics, all the materials for the drum pads, you get on your own, and you can be really creative with this. We've had uh, a couple of customers make them out of um, uh, IKEA Tupperware style buckets. We've had other ones build them out of pieces of wood. You have a whole bunch of different possibilities. What we're going to be building today is the most traditional style of drum pad. Uh, here's what you're going to need in terms of tools. Um, you're going to need tin snips, wire cutter, scissor, and a pen. Uh, in terms of supplies, you're going to need a little bit of solder, not very much. We like to use two-part epoxy to connect the piezos onto the, the metal pads and some spray adhesive. In terms of supplies, what you need is uh, uh, a mouse pad. Now, here's one of our pro tips. We, we built a lot of these drum pads over the years. This is a mouse pad from one of those five and dime dollar style stores. It's pretty garbage. It's about uh, one eighth of an inch thick and what ends up happening, it's foam with material on top of it, but the foam and the material after they've been hit by drumsticks a couple of times, they come apart. What works a lot better, and we've had some that are many years old now and they're still going strong, is a, a traditional style mouse pad. The ones that are about a quarter of an inch thick and it's a neoprene type material with the nylon on top. So that's for the very top of the drum pad. The next piece of material that you need is a sheet of metal. Um, the sheet of metal, you can get this at like Ace or Lowe's or any, any sort of big box hardware store. They usually have a little bin with a whole bunch of pieces of metal in it. It's uh, just flexible like this. This is, this is good enough for the drum pads. There's a couple of different sorts that you can use for the base. We like to use this quarter inch plywood. It, it seems to work well for us. Next is the sound absorbing material. We've done a lot of experimenting with this stuff also. The best, this is the pro tip for you, is this very, very soft packing foam. You'll sometimes find uh, electronics equipment packed in this, so if you have any lying around, keep it. It's extremely soft, and you think, wow, this is way too soft, I can stick my finger right into it. But your drum pad is bigger than that, and when the pressure is spread over it, it doesn't crush very much. What doesn't work well is, you've probably seen these, they sell them as big foamy floor mats with the jagged edges to it. This is just a little piece. This is way too dense. Um, also camping mat, it's very nice, very soft. It's not very crushable though. What ends up happening with these harder materials is when you're hitting them, the, the mouse pads tend to bounce around on you. Um, and also they're not actually absorbing the pressure from the drumsticks, so they just don't sound good. So let's get started. First off is you're going to want to decide on the size of your actual drum pad. Um, what we've done sometimes is we'll use a disc. This seems to be a nice size. It doesn't make, if you're going to make six or eight pads, it doesn't make your whole drum kit very big, so it can be portable. Uh, today we're just going to use any old circle that we have here. We're going to use a piece of, a roll of tape in order to, to cut out our, our circles. So. I like to start off with the, the metal disc because the metal disc has the most work to do. I'll just use the smaller piece right here. Um, with the metal disc, we're going to be cutting it with the tin snips. I start off with my Sharpie. Simply draw a circle. It's also pretty important that when you're choosing a circle, that you use the same diameter circle for all of your parts. So your mouse pad and your underlying pad will all have the same size. This way, if your drumstick hits around the edges of the drum, uh, they'll always hit the metal pad. Because what we've had, what we've done in the past is we made some pretty big drum pads and put only a, a small metal pad into it. And any hits that happen away from the metal disc part, 
it doesn't activate the Pi Zone, you don't hear anything. I should actually be wearing gloves here because this is always really sharp after it's cut with these uh, the pin snips and probably safety glasses too. So do as I say, not as I do. Thank you. And we're almost done with this. Toss that down there. So now we have one nice metal disc. Next part, this actually comes with the drum kit, it's the Paizo. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be gluing the Paizo onto the metal disc, and this way it absorbs the, the vibration from the drum stick and transmits it into the Paizo, which creates a voltage which goes off into the drum kit kit. Uh, I like to use two-part epoxy. Any two-part epoxy will do. You just squirt out a little amount onto your work surface. I think mine's a bit stale here. It's not coming out very fast. Anyways, we don't need very much, so we're lucky. doesn't matter how stale it is. Let's pack this up. Okay, now, very important, you need your Spike and Sea Labs branded popsicle stick to start with. Here we go. Stir it up. And what you do is you apply a little bit onto the center of the disc. Sometimes you can rough up the disc a bit to make it stick better, but this metal is already pretty rough, so I'm not roughing this piece, particular piece up. Put the piezo in, squash it down, make sure that there's a glue all over. And then you set this aside for whatever amount of time the manufacturer says, usually five minutes, ten minutes, something like that. And it's going to be hard enough to continue. Meanwhile, what we'll do is we're going to work on the uh, on the felt pad part. Not the felt pad, but excuse me, the foam pad part. We're going to take the same circle that we used to draw the other part, and we're going to draw onto the foam. Sometimes this black foam is hard to see the line that you've drawn, but it's okay. You can sort of make it up. Here we go. So we're going to cut this out. When you have multiple drum pads on one piece of wood, the stick strike from one drum pad will go into the piezo sensor of the next pad over. So that's not such a good thing because when you, you'll have to turn down the sensitivity of the drum pads. If you plan on using velocity sensitivity, what I recommend doing is making um, some sort of support and having the drum pads as independent as possible so you can allow the maximum sensitivity of each drum pad without it transmitting into the next drum pad over. One of the experiments that we did, which is sort of fun, which doesn't work by the way, is we made a single drum pad. So here's one drum pad, completely independent from the other ones. Uh, problem with this guy though, is when you start hitting it, it starts moving over. So after you've been drumming for a while, your, your drum pad's skating all over your surface that you're playing on. So what I recommend, if you want the maximum sensitivity, is make your own individual drum pads, but then connect them to some sort of pipe or framing um, that'll absorb the vibration, so the vibrations won't go from one to the other, but will allow it to be working on its own. So what we're gonna do now is, in our example here, we're going back to the piece of wood. We're gonna take the piece of wood, and basically we're going to be making a sandwich with our very squashy piece of foam. Then we're going to take the piezo that's mounted onto the disc. We're not finished with this though. We're letting it dry a little bit more still. And then we're going to put the mouse pad on top of that. So um, let's go back to the, the metal pad for the moment and we'll get back to this in a sec. Okay, the kit comes with piezo and the piezo has these two little teeny short pieces of, of wire on it. What you're going to need to do is add some wires to these to make it uh, long enough to get back to the drum kit wherever you happen to position your drum kit. What I like to do is take two lengths of wire. The best type of wire for this is stranded wire because it's strong because you're going to necessarily be moving these. You're going to be receiving a lot of vibration from the drumsticks. So take a length of two wires. I like to use color-coded wires, uh, speaker wire, uh, wire for like a, a lamp at home will work. Most any wire will do. It can be thick gauge, thin gauge. It doesn't matter too much, we've noticed. So I'm just going to strip a little bit on, on both ends. One end will go into the drum kit, and the other end will go into uh, the piezo. What's nice about color-coded wire is there's a color coding on the piezos. There's a positive and negative side to the signal. So with this, even though it's an AC signal, it still makes a difference. What, um, what happens is after you've strung a whole bunch of these into 
your drum kit, if they're color coded, you can actually tell where, where they go. So it makes it a little bit easier. So here, in order to tune the wires, I want to wait till my soldering iron's up to temperature. I'm just going to apply a little bit of solder to the ends. This makes it a lot easier when you're actually soldering it onto the very thin piezo wires. There, we got a little bit of solder on those. I'm going to do the same thing here with the piezos. And I just felt the epoxy is already dry, so we're going to be able to work with that afterwards. Got a little bit of solder on those two wires, a little bit of solder on this wire. There we go. Good. Whoops. Solder on my desk. Okay. And now. Okay. Solder on there. On the next side. See, so having the, the tips pre tinned makes it much easier to, to solder them onto the. Uh, the very, very thin piezo wires. That works too. Great. Now you have to be really careful with the piezo wires because they're they're so thin, they're very, very weak. Um, a little bit of electrical tape or shrink wrap tubing would probably come in handy at this point so that you don't short up the wires. We'll do that afterwards. Now, we're missing the mouse pad, so we're going to take a piece of mouse pad and we're going to cut it for the for the top. I'm going to take my same diameter circle. Sharpie. I'm going to draw this. We'll have this pad together in no time now. Okay, here we go. Cut that circle. You make this one a little bit nicer than the others just because it's the part that everybody sees. Now we're ready to make our drum kit sandwich. What we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of wood. We're going to take our foam. We've got all the pieces of the sandwich that we're going to, to stack up. And uh, I like to use the spray glue. This is pretty messy stuff because it spray glue. It sprays all over. What we're going to do is uh, shake it up and take out a piece of scrap paper. Move this aside for a sec. And here's our piece of foam. So first off, we're going to spray the foam. Get a nice coat on one side. That's going to be the downside. We can now stick that onto our piece of wood, like so. Okay, it's on there pretty well. Now we're going to do the same thing with the piezo. We're going to spray glue first on the side with the wires. Because that is going to go down. You don't want the piezo being struck directly by the drumstick. So it's going to go underneath. Like so. Okay, leave me enough room on the wires there so that I can clean those up afterwards. And now, the last part, the mouse pad, top, and we stick that on top, and voila, we have a drum pad. Cheers.